In this video we will discuss on anatomy of brachial plexus. For better understanding please watch the introductory video on spinal nerves before proceeding further. As discussed earlier, the brachial plexus is formed from the ventral rami of the lower four cervical spinal nerves and first thoracic spinal nerve. The brachial plexus supplies motor and sensory innervation to the upper limb. Let's discuss this in detail. Brachial plexus consists of roots, trunks, divisions, cords and branches. The roots and trunks are in the posterior triangle of neck, and the cords are in the axilla. The roots are formed by the ventral rami of C5 to C8 nerves and ventral ramus of first thoracic nerve. Sometimes C5 root may receive fibers from C4, this is called prefix type. And when T1 root receives fibers from T2 root, then it is called postfix type. Trunks are formed by the union of the C5 to T1 roots. There are three trunks. The upper trunk is formed by the union of C5 and C6 root. The middle trunk is continuation of C7 root. And the lower trunk is formed by the union of C8 and T1 roots. The trunks pass downwards and laterally to the outer border of the first rib. Each trunk divides into anterior and posterior divisions near the clavicle. So, there are six divisions, three anterior divisions, and three posterior divisions. The divisions leave the posterior triangle of neck and enter into the axilla. Once the divisions enter the axilla, they combine to form cords. There are three cords. The lateral cord is formed by the union of anterior divisions of upper and middle trunks. The medial cord is continuation of anterior division of lower trunk. The posterior cord is formed by the union of the posterior divisions of all the three trunks. So, lateral cord carries nerve fibers from C5, C6, and C7 roots. The medial cord carries nerve fibers from C8 and T1 roots. And the posterior cord carries nerve fibers from C5 to T1 roots. Branches of brachial plexus can be divided into supraclavicular and infraclavicular branches. Supraclavicular branches arise from roots and the trunks. The branches from the roots are dorsal scapular nerve, a branch to join phrenic nerve, long thoracic nerve, and muscular branches to longus colli and scalene. The branches from the upper trunk are nerve to subclavius and suprascapular nerve. The infraclavicular branches arise from the cords. The branches from the lateral cord are lateral pectoral nerve, musculocutaneous nerve, and lateral root of median nerve. The branches from the medial cord are medial pectoral nerve, medial cutaneous nerve of the arm, medial cutaneous nerve of the forearm, ulnar nerve, and the medial root of median nerve. The branches from the posterior cord are upper subscapular nerve, thoracodorsal nerve, lower subscapular nerve, axillary nerve, and radial nerve. We'll discuss the five main terminal branches of the brachial plexus that arise from the cords. These are musculocutaneous nerve, axillary nerve, median nerve, ulnar nerve, and radial nerve. The musculocutaneous nerve is a terminal branch of lateral cord. So, it has C5, C6, and C7 nerve fibers. As, the name suggests it supplies both muscle and skin. As it passes down the arm, it supplies coracobrachialis, biceps brachii, and brachialis muscle. In the forearm it continues as the lateral cutaneous nerve of the forearm, which innervates the skin of the lateral region of the forearm. The axillary nerve is a terminal branch of posterior cord. It consists of nerve fibers from C5 and C6 roots. It gives off anterior branch, posterior branch, and a collateral branch to the long head of triceps brachii muscle in some persons. The posterior branch supplies teres minor and posterior part of deltoid. It continues as upper lateral cutaneous nerve of arm. The anterior branch supplies the anterior part of deltoid. And it terminates into cutaneous branches to the anterior and anterolateral parts of the shoulder. The trunk of the axillary nerve gives off an articular filament which supplies the shoulder joint. 
Median nerve is formed by two roots. The medial and lateral roots. The medial root of median nerve is branch of medial cord. And lateral root of median nerve is branch of lateral cord of the brachial plexus. So, it has C5 to T1 nerve fibers. The median nerve passes down the arm along with brachial artery. First it lies lateral to the artery, then it passes anteriorly, and reaches medial to the brachial artery in the lower arm. In the arm, median nerve does not supply any sensory or motor innervation. In the forearm, the median nerve gives rise to many muscular branches, anterior interosseous nerve and palmar cutaneous nerve. The direct motor branches of the median nerve supply superficial muscles of the anterior compartment of forearm, expect flexor carpi ulnaris which is supplied by ulnar nerve. So, the direct muscular branches of median nerve, supply palmaris longus, flexor carpi radialis, pronator teres, and flexor digitorum superficialis. The anterior interosseous branch of median nerve, supply the deep muscles of the anterior compartment of forearm. Namely, flexor pollicis longus, pronator quadratus, and lateral half of flexor digitorum profundus. For completion's sake, the medial half of flexor digitorum profundus is supplied by ulnar nerve. The palmar cutaneous branch of the median nerve arises at the distal part of the forearm. It supplies sensory innervation to the thenar eminence of the palm and the central palm. The median nerve enters the hand via the carpal tunnel, deep to the flexor retinaculum. In the hand and divides into recurrent muscular branch and digital cutaneous branch. The recurrent muscular branch supplies the thenar muscles, namely, opponent's pollicis, abductor pollicis brevis, and flexor pollicis brevis muscles. Digital cutaneous nerves consist of three proper digital branches and two common digital branches. Two proper digital branches supply the thumb and other proper digital branch supply the lateral side of the index finger. This digital branch to index finger also supplies the first lumbrical. The common digital branches supply the second and third interdigital clefts with adjoining index, middle, and lateral half of ring finger. The lateral common digital branch also supplies the second lumbrical. So sensory innervation of median nerve and hand are thenar eminence and central palm by the palmar cutaneous branch. And palmar surface and fingertips of lateral 3NA half digits by the palmar digital cutaneous branches. The ulnar nerve is a terminal branch of medial cord. So, it has nerve fibers of C8 and T1. In the arm it runs down on the medial side of the brachial artery. It passes behind the medial epicondyle of humerus, and then it enters the anterior compartment of the forearm. Ulnar nerve does not supply motor or sensory innervation in the arm. In the forearm it gives off three branches, namely muscular branches, palmar cutaneous branch, and dorsal cutaneous branch. The muscular branch supplies two muscle in the anterior compartment of forearm, namely flexor carpi ulnaris, and medial half of flexor digitorum profundus. The palmar cutaneous branch enters the hand, and supplies the skin over the hypothenar eminence. The dorsal cutaneous branch enters the dorsum of hand, and supplies the dorsal surface of the medial one and a half fingers, and the associated dorsal hand area. The ulna nerve then enters the hand superficial to the flexor retinaculum. In the hand it terminates into superficial and deep ulnar branches. The superficial branch supplies the palmaris, brevis and gives digital branches to the medial one and a half fingers. Deep branch supplies hypothenar muscles, third and fourth lumbricals, and all the palmar and dorsal interossei muscles. It terminates by supplying adductor pollicis. It should be noted that ulnar nerve supplies all intrinsic muscles of the hand except lateral two lumbricals, opponent's pollicis, abductor pollicis brevis, and flexor pollicis brevis. These muscles are supplied by median nerve. It should be noted that in some people, the flexor pollicis has dual nerve supply. The superficial head is supplied by median nerve, and the deep head of flexor pollicis is supplied by ulna nerve. The radial nerve is the terminal branch of posterior cord. So, it has nerve fibers from C5 to T1. In the axilla it is located posterior to the axillary artery. 
Then it passes into the posterior compartment of arm. In the arm it gives sensory and motor branches. Sensory branches include posterior cutaneous nerve of arm, lower lateral cutaneous nerve of arm, and posterior cutaneous nerve of forearm. The muscular branches supply triceps brachii, brachioradialis, extensor carpi radialis longus, and conius, and brachialis. It should be noted that brachialis muscle is also supplied by median nerve. So, brachialis muscle has dual nerve supply. In lower part of the arm, it pierces the lateral intermuscular septum to reach the anterior compartment of the arm. Then it passes down in front of lateral epicondyle of humerus to reach the forearm. Here, the nerve terminates into deep branch and superficial branch. The deep branch, also called posterior interosseous nerve after it pierces the supinator muscle, supplies the muscles in the posterior compartment of forearm. The superficial branch runs down the forearm. And near the dorsum of the hand, it supplies the dorsal aspect of lateral part of the hand, dorsal aspect of thumb, index finger, middle finger and lateral side of ring finger except the nail beds, which are supplied by proper digital branches of median nerve. So, we complete the discussion on brachial plexus here. Thank you for watching, hope it was helpful. See you soon with the next video on intercostal nerves.